episode of Relax and Take Notes, Love Dorsey and I discuss manipulation in relationships, such as love bombing, isolation, trauma bonding, and gaslighting. But first, a word from our sponsors. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Are you or anyone you know suffering with high blood pressure, diabetes, or cholesterol? Well, the solution is here, and it's olive leaf extract. Olive leaf extract all natural formula helps lower diabetic blood sugar, lower blood pressure, as well as cholesterol. And did I mention it's also good for candida and eczema? For more information, go to shopmyoliveleaf.com. What's good, Relax and Take Notes family? And we back with the one and only Love Dorsey. How you been, Queen? I'm, I'm glad to be back, and I've been blessed. Absolutely. Blessed. That's all I can say, blessed. Well, we're going to get right into it because the people have been asking. We did the first two episodes. They've done phenomenally well. The conversation in terms of the comments is f phenomenal. Like, I, they like I, these conversations is what we need. Yeah, and I, I peep that. I, I love that it's making people really look at the real issues and they're showing that they're interested. Right. Because right. we've been interested in a lot of bullshit. A for lot a while. of bullshit. A <laughs> lot of bullshit. And it's the depth of conversation, obviously, the seriousness that you bring to the conversation, which is your life work at this point. You know what I mean? It shows. And, you know, we were talking before we actually started recording, and I was just saying, for those of us who really know what you bring to our community, yeah. it's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know what I mean? The level of, of, of analysis, the seriousness by which you approach the conversation, even as a woman, yeah. right, is refreshing. I that. Because this particular space, and when you, when you have the relationship conversation, is oftentimes dominated by men, yeah. right? And they're gonna, and we're gonna bring the perspective that we bring, yeah. but it's always good to have that balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to have that feminine balance. I feel like for a long time, we needed to bring back accountability mm -hmm. for both sides equally yes. in all areas no um handicaps given no passes just and because i feel like that's the remedy to all this stuff yes. that's messed up in our culture yeah a absolutely and speaking of culture i want to start off by reading this uh, this definition of culture right that i think is going to um serve as kind of like a uh, a catalyst for today's conversation yeah. so Culture refers to the shared beliefs, values, customs, and behaviors and artifacts of a particular group or society. It encompasses the collective expression of a group's identity and is shaped by history, language, okay. traditions, and social interactions. Culture influences how individuals think, communicate, and interact with each other, and it is often passed down from one generation to the Come next. On. It includes elements such as art, literature, music, religion, rituals, and social norms, as well as the way people dress, eat, live, and how they live their daily lives. Culture is a complex and dynamic concept that shapes our understanding of the world and our place in it. For me, culture is the reference point for everything we do, say, think, and feel. Yep. Yep. I, I'm going to tell you, like, when you see me talk, anywhere on my platform other platforms anywhere you hear me use culture a lot because mm -hmm. you know i grew up understanding that that is our behavior that yeah. is our mindset that is the way we think and when you understand that you'll realize in all those areas art history you know just right. everything Language, that embodies all of, mm -hmm. all of that you have to educate and make yourself knowledgeable about your people and where you come from, your yeah. family, your community, your neighborhood, so that you can understand what you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of people, they don't know what they are, male they or female. They, they don't know what they are. Mm. And then it's triggering when somebody else is pointing out what you are to you and you're so unaware. And it, 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 you, it feels a certain kind mm -hmm. of way because you haven't spent time actually looking into you. Looking Where do you get these you. behaviors from? From your eating habits to, you know, how you talk, why you talk the way you talk, your views. Why do you have those particular views? Yeah. Why do you operate in certain habitual behaviors? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, oftentimes you hear parents say that they're responsible, you know, for raising children. And, mm -hmm. and we are as parents. 
you know, and I look at raising children as providing food, clothing, and shelter, right? But I also focus on rearing. And yeah. to me, rearing is just as important where you take accountability for your child's psych psychological needs, their emotional needs, Come their on. spiritual needs. Come you on. see what I'm saying? And that, to your point, is oftentimes what's, what's missing. <laughs> we as parents, we may do a great job providing the food, the clothing, and the shelter, yep. but what is your child's psyche like yep. you know where are they emotionally yep. do they have a healthy self-concept yep. healthy self-concept of themselves yep. you know what i mean before they even go into college or the you know the university system are they r truly rooted in the things that you've taught them as a parent yep and i'm gonna tell you because it, it's so you know law what you state and when you look at the adults that are raising those children a lot of them they haven't taken care of those things for themselves. Mm. So it's almost a space of this isn't really valuable. Yeah. And so with that as this idea or this belief that's incorrect, obviously, now it's like we want a reward for just the shelter, the feeding, and the clothing. We want big praises big praise, for that yeah. basic level stuff that isn't even the tip of what it's needs to be reared surface. into yeah. that individual in order for them to have a productive life. Right. Right. It, it's it's not it doesn't take much if you are a basic level stable person to feed, clothe, shelter, get them through public school, right. get them into the workforce. That's it. Yeah. To me, that's basic. That's it's basic. bottom level. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you come from, it's harder for some people than, than others, others. But I mm -hmm. think we need to start being real about the standards. Like, yeah. you know, you set the ceiling for yourself. Absolutely. So we got the bar set low to where we doing big backyard <laughs> celebrations just because you got little Ray Ray to the 12th grade. He barely made it. They barely pushed him it. through a lot of the classes. <laughs> you kept him fresh to death. He keep a cut. Right. And now we, we celebrating and it's, he going he gonna to carry that torch and mm -hmm. set the ceiling in life for himself. Yeah. Very low level. Very and low. And celebrate basic stuff. Yeah. And this is why when we hear, you know, the bigger level things that we fully capable of accomplishing, it's like, that's, whoa, he did what? He did what? She, did, she what? did what? She yeah. invested in that. He got a business. How they did that? Credit. What's that? Right. You. That's a scam, ain't it? See? You can't even see yourself even in, see in these. These are average things. We just got the bar set so low. Love, I'm going to tell you, one of the worst things that we can do as parents is to, like you said, spend those years pushing the child through high school only for them to go off to college, the military or whatever, and come back two, three years later, a person that we don't even recognize. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, yep. to, to your point, that's when we realize that we dropped the ball yeah. as a parent. Yep. If, 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 if they go to college and before they even graduate, they come back as a person that you no longer even recognize, mm -hmm. that means that you did not do your job in terms of their emotions, their psychological development, yep. their spiritual fulfillment, yep. and they got, for lack of a better way to say it, turned out. Yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Because you sent me out into the world. Unprepared. Yes, yes. You sent me out, and the things that happened to me through my choices, whatever environments that I was in, I allowed them to foundationally shift who I was because the foundation was weak. It, it was weak. It was weak. When it I just left didn't home, show there was because no I was rip. at home. Yes. <laughs> it just didn't manifest itself because I was still in the nest. Yep. But when I left the nest, it, it, it was chaotic and, and confusing, and I got pulled to and fro. Yeah. I wasn't rooted in anything tangible yeah. because that wasn't instilled in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, no, thank definitely thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And, when I, when I'm going to tell you, when I talk to younger people, I try to point out to them, hey, listen, don't be that younger individual, especially for, you know, our people, African-American people, black people, that you, you are in those prime years where you're trying to become an adult, that 19 to like 24. Mm -hmm. Don't be in that time frame and lose self. Meaning you're so caught up in relationships and trends and trying to fit in yeah. that you don't look at self-care. The physical fitness, the what you put in your body, what's best for you mm -hmm. to keep a healthy mental space, what traumas you have. Like, don't get so far off that by the time you're 25, you don't recognize you. Don't, you don't even Damn, know yourself. Damn, if mama right. could recognize me, I'm not the person that I said I want to be. I don't like who I am. Yeah. So I'm easily triggered because I'm always defending always. anything I say or do because I lost myself from the first relationship to the second friendship to these group of people I started hanging around to the job I took over here. All of those things start to just kind of shake you around and when mm -hmm. you get done, you like a, a a bag of items that are now all shifted together. Scattered up. Yeah, yeah. and you, you 
don't know, you don't feel good about yourself and you don't know yourself. You, exactly. So I tell them, like, if you don't have foundational things, that even if your parents didn't set these things for you, if you don't get a planner, sit down and decide. Here are some key things throughout my week and my month. I'm not going to change from doing yeah. this stuff for nobody. Nobody. So, for example, when I talk to young males, get you a physical fitness or exercise routine. I don't care if it's going to the gym and playing basketball once or twice a week or going to an actual workout gym and mm -hmm. working out or pumping weights in the backyard or jogging around. Get that release of physical energy. Get your heart going. That's right. a part of being a male. A male. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. I don't care what female you date. What situations you go through, don't lose that. Don't lose that. Keep that. Throughout life. Yes. Yeah. Keep that. Mm -hmm. And and line yourself up with a list of these things that involve supporting your physical health, mm -hmm. mental health, just even shit you like to do that makes you feel good about yeah. existing. Yeah. And stick to those no matter what else is going on. You're non-negotiable. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff, it's not about money. No. The no. things that I'm talking, it ain't, it, to sit down and ground yourself, take your shoes off, plant your feet in the grass, breathe, <laughs> right. get a grip <laughs> on where you're at, who you are, what you want to be, reflect on your goals. Yeah, These are, are activities mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm not changing this for nobody. Nobody. Give nobody. a damn what's going on, what jobs I'm at. If I got fired, I got broke up with. We lose ourselves when we don't have these. Absolutely. Because you change every day with, with what routines you're doing to keep up with who you're dealing with. Right. Chasing the crowd, the need to be accepted by, you know, so-called friends and yes. peers and all of that. Like you said, that will have you, yep. you know, up one minute, down the next, because your whole way of validating is external. Yep. You know what I mean? You have no way of validating yep. and giving your own, providing value for your yep. own self because to your point, you never even took the time to get to know yourself, yeah. to yeah. really know what your interests are, what what drives you, yeah. what your purpose yep. is. You know yep. what I mean? You ever heard that concept like of um, a young adult finding their tribe? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we glorify so much being a, a independent individual that don't need nobody. We overlook that it is human nature to be accepted into some sort of group, society, family unit, Absolutely. gang. I don't give a damn what it is. There right. is an urge for that. And when you don't have foundational things or principles that you're going to stand on that keep you healthy, right, yeah. being you, you'll never know what your tribe is. You'll, you'll be know. somewhere everywhere trying to fit in. And this mm -hmm. goes for male or female. Or female. This yeah. is when you see mm -hmm. dudes find themselves in the streets and this ain't even And this ain't me. them. Like, bro, some of these dudes, this them. Like, from a young age, yeah. this they was headed in this direction. This right. ain't even me, but yeah. I didn't fit in over here. This happened in my life. I never had no solid principles for myself. Right. So now I'm over here with these dudes. Oh, they gave me a sense of belonging, and I and I yep. joined up. I didn't even ask questions. Next thing you know, I'm jumped into something, yep. and I'm not even aware of yeah. the consequences that come with this type and of lifestyle. Now I'm telling on people and stuff, and it's like, in, in, in me, you know, I know this was never me. So I was never finna hold y'all right. down and stay solid. Anyway, anyway, this is some shit I was trying, and y'all right. believed I was a part. You know what I mean? And y'all was just I trying know, to increase the numbers. Yes, I know so many <laughs> Any, dudes anybody that. Do, anybody, anybody will do. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I I, I, I have a lot of people that, that reach out and connect with me that are in prison. Mm. And a lot of them, this is their story. They yeah. wasn't a gangster. They right. wasn't, you know, coming from, you know, that household where the right. streets was in our house. So, you exactly. know what I mean? These was guys yeah. that, like, it looked cool. They had other and I options. And I didn't fit mm -hmm. in with these other friends. It was it was other stuff that I couldn't quite navigate because I didn't know myself. And the streets always hired. And I got caught up yeah, in some Yeah, so shit. I jumped out there. Yeah. I got caught up in some mess. You know, it's a couple guys I done talked to. They got talked into taking a charge just not knowing any better. Bro said, I, sh I should say it was my gun. And love, yeah, I ain't back. You know, I'm 37 now, but back then I was 19. Bro just know. said, I needed to do it. It was my turn to take a the, the, the take one for the I, team. I, I, I never had a felony. They told me I'd be out in five years or whatever. You know what I mean? Because who gun it was, yep. it could have been his third strike. And he didn't want to do that yep. 25 to life or whatever it would have yep. been. You know what I mean? Yep. And like you said, young bro just got caught up. And, yep. You know, as we say, tricked off the street. Yep. Yep, and he it, he was never a street dude to begin, to begin with. with. And it's yeah. easy to end up like that. Yeah, like, very even, easy. Even when you look at what's happening with people being violated sexually, especially some of the, the testimonies that I hear from males, mm -hmm. even black males, when they talk about, like, they found themselves in rooms trying to fit in with groups of people that right. you don't understand what these people what the dynamics are. They in here experiencing mm -hmm. and doing all kinds of stuff, and this is what they want to do. Right. Like, this is something they've looked into or set this group up to explore 
or this kind of sexual stuff. Mm -hmm. You over here just trying to fit in or be a part of this group. And now you look up and you done did some things and, and you're, you're shamed and you're triggered if somebody bring them up and you're worried and you now you don't fit in nowhere. <laughs> Because you don't know, you don't know right. what to stand on. Right. I don't want to stand on what I'm doing. Those that are involved in that lifestyle, they've accepted, accepted it, and, and that's they their good tribe. with that. Yeah, that's their tribe. They're doing better than you. <laughs> they, yes, they found their tribe. <laughs> I see, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, on, with women on the same token, yeah. it'd be the same thing. I talked yeah. to so many women. I did a Zoom the other night, and it was like five women spoke up. They were like, "I got pushed to be a single mother." by the older women in my family. And mm. I know that now, love. And they were like, I was handling my daughter's father, my son's daughter a certain way, based on like getting off the phone with my mama. She telling me what to tell him. I go tell him that. Regurgitating. And yes, right. and because she's so supportive of this behavior, I was so with it. Yeah. And I felt like this is what I'm supposed to be on. Now I'm 37, doing everything by myself, uh, you know, 29, Miserable. 40, right. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and this ain't what I wanted. This ain't I what I wanted. I realized like, hey, I want him to You got come tricked get, by yes, your mama. Yes. You and, got tricked out of being a wife by your mama. Yep. And you got to take a certain responsibility. There's yeah, a responsibility that's, that's, that's in it deep. for the elders, the generational yeah, curses, that and we'll know any better. talk mm -hmm. about it. But you also have to take a responsibility that once you start partaking in adult activities like having children and things right. like that, you got to sit down and ground yourself to a certain set of basic principles. Or you will not find your tribe. You Sometimes not, the tribe yeah. you were born into ain't your tribe. Now, oftentimes it's not. Because yes. then once you reach a certain age, you realize how much trauma is even Come in on. your own family. Come on. And it prompts you to, to leave yes. and find another tribe. Yes. Or what I say, create family. Yes. Because family that's, ain't that's necessarily what, I mean. what you've been born exactly, in. Exactly. It's what you create. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And again, with creating a family, when you don't have certain things established that this is what I'm on, you will go out and attract people into this family you're creating that don't fit with that what don't you're trying even to do. Fit. Yeah, it starts that don't even with, fit. let me get an idea of what I'm on. Yes. Let me So that I can stand on this business that Regardless. I get myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That even if I come across a few people that don't fit in the tribe, the mission statement and the principles of what I'm on. Is what we own, yes. with you or without you. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Nah. And, and the mission will be fulfilled whether you're on board or not. Exactly. I, I love it. Exactly. I love it. Let's talk about this manipulation in relationships, Ooh. right? Because that's that's a big thing that we see going on for, for, for anybody, I would say over the age of probably 25, 30, I'm sure that they've experienced some level of manipulation yeah. in relationships, whether yeah. man or woman. Yeah. Talk about where that where that whole thing stems from. It, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. On the surface, you know, we talked earlier about um, the different podcasts and everybody talking about relationships and, yeah. you know, I've heard the verbiage thrown around a lot about, oh, I got love bombed, right? Mm -hmm. You love to bomb me. And, and love bomb is a form, love bombing is a form of manipulation, right? Yeah, but excessive I think, gifts and, yes. and showing like just crazy levels of affection Shit, and up a, front. early on, yep. yeah, way too early. Yep, mm -hmm. and then you slowly take it away right. where the person doesn't really notice at first and then, you know, months or years later, they don't realize like I'm getting nothing that attracted me in the beginning yeah. and I find myself unable to leave like an addict chasing that high. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get things back to where it was in the beginning. I think what we overlook when we talk about this stuff on podcasts, because a lot of, you know, the people in this conversation are educated, is that you are going to meet everybody's representative up front. A, 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 and that a, is a form of manipulation. Absolutely. Surface yeah. level, it's a natural form of manipulation because people are not showing up at the door as with all their baggage. Yeah, as their authentic self, they're as not. I say. Yeah. They're not. And then there's the part, like what we were just saying, a lot of people don't really know themselves. Right. So when I do come, you know, I think I'm being me, but in all reality, I'm showing you this version of me as a woman that later on, you're going to get a completely different version. Right. Now, you fast forward, when I talk about manipulation in relationships, I speak on when you're in it, it is clear that you and this person are doing something together, mm -hmm. right? That involves just you two outside of other people is the understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get into the plays on emotion as I learn stuff about what triggers you. You get into me using the things that we've been through yeah. to... Yeah. Keep you stringing along or exactly. keep you doing things for me. Mm -hmm. And this is both male M and men female. and women. Yeah, men and women. I'm do pretty it. sure yeah. from, you know, being in the barbershop, you talk to customers and guys that talk about how Absolutely. they caught on that the woman manipulating them Absolutely. out of some 
Something, something, some, some, some form, caught on some way fashion, too late. energy, yeah. money. Yep. Some caught on in the conversations <laughs> in the barbershop. <laughs> they realized they that they were being manipulated. Yes, yes. And, and I feel like in our community, we sweep a lot of it under the roof. Absolutely. Like we give, I, I, you can correct me if you, or you can give me your view if you feel different, but I feel like as men, you guys sit back and you give women a lot of passes when you too know we're manipulating the fuck out of the situation. Way, way too many passes because. You know, you just tolerate it, yeah, and I the, can't understand it. Because oftentimes, men, you know, they're, they're oftentimes men are broken as young boys. Yeah, they're, let's just, you know, what I mean, yeah. and and we talked about this last time. Yeah. You know, they're actually emotionally broken as young yeah. boys. So by the time they even get old enough to date. Yeah. Right. They already have a, a skewed view yeah. of what a woman is, yeah. you know, from their mother. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. so because she was manipulative, because she was abusive yep. emotionally and yep. physically, they think that it's absolutely OK to be 25, 30 years old and have a woman who reflects that. Right. But here, because I, I love what you're saying. Here's the danger in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this as a woman that's willing to keep it real on all levels. Once you allow me to start manipulating things in the in the relationship, I'm going to keep doing it. It's and an then, incentive. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then if you allow me to do it enough, where even if you know I'm doing it, but you don't check it or say anything or address it, if you allow me to do it enough where I feel like I'm smarter than you, right. I'm getting away with some shit. Now, you might be at the barbershop with your homeboy mm -hmm. saying, now, love thanks she getting over, but I already yeah, know. Yeah, giving a whole backstory. When you, you, yeah. you turn me into a monster. Yeah. There's a respect level that's lost for that's you because mm -hmm. my conversations with myself and in my circles have to do with me talking about how I can get over on you. I got this nigga wrapped around my face. At, at I got some this. point. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the respect. What I want men to understand is the respect level drops. Even if I stay with you. Even if you. Has nothing to do yeah. with me breaking up with nah. you, not giving you sex, mm -mm. any of that. The respect level drops. I will do it more and more and more things will be done behind your back because what you're doing is gassing me up right. that I'm smarter than you in a lot of areas and, because and you're smarter, not addressing it. Right. And smarter oftentimes can be internalized as I'm better. That's what I'm getting you, you, you When I'm I mean? saying I'm, smarter I'm, in this I'm context. I'm a better person than yes, you. Yes. You know I mean? am the, the head. Right. Cause I'm I, the head. Yes. You put mm -hmm. somebody in a room and they manipulating the people in this room. I'm the smartest one in the room. I run shit. I run shit. That's what that's yeah. registering as. Yeah. I run shit. Even he if think they're he... older, they're younger, it don't matter. matter. I'm the I'm the one that's able to get over on everybody yep. in in every way. Yep. And nobody has even checked me or called me out on it. So and, and to your point, once that goes on for a certain amount of time, that's just what it is. Yep. And yep. that person becomes empowered yes, to that's do what, that. That's what I'm saying. By creating yes, the monster. Yes, the mm -hmm. silence and y'all letting it slide for whatever reasons, right? Because well, you just named... we know what it is. It's, it's sex. Right. You know what I mean? Right, it's, but that's why I said the sex, sex don't stop. But then, You can make more money than me. Like, right. you are... Yeah. And look at the view. You could be head of household all, all the that. way. All right? that. All that. If I'm manipulating you out of certain stuff and getting over on you in a lot of ways, the... the and you thing, lack the ability to hold on. me accountable. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I think a lot of men are not, they're not being honest with themselves. No, I, I can't understand it from, like, I get the depth of, you know, the reasons why, the deep issues as to why men aren't speaking up. But what I don't get is when it gets to the point where the woman is clearly in the space that I'm describing. Right. She popping her shit on you, bro. Right. It's no all longer a humble, mm -hmm. like, I got my husband to do this or I got my boyfriend yeah, to do this. using the it's natural all, femininity. Yes, yeah, it ain't it's that. A dif it's a difference in using Be your femininity yes. to get what it is that you need as a woman. Yes. And like, to your point, manipulating the whole relationship. Yes. I'm watching females glorify using shame and guilt and Rolodex and their grievances from things you might have, you know, fell short right. on in the past it, to, to get you to do, stick around, tolerate, put up with, be beat down, yeah. talked about, embarrassed publicly, shamed Absolutely. in regards to the verbiage she uses about you when you're not around and to your face. To your face. Yeah. It's it's. It's on the internet, off the internet, in the community, like all around. And it's like, man, that's just that's my baby mama. That's just bro, how bro, women. That's is. my wife. That's just how women. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, 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 not. it's not. It's not. You know, I always <laughs> say, when when a man and his woman have their first major disagreement, mm -hmm. that becomes the catalyst for how every how the situation, yeah. how the relationship is going to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we know there's going to be disagreements. Yep. Shit, they may be outright arguments, yep. right? But 
I say all the time, we can disagree, but let's not disconnect. Yeah. And we can say things, men to women or women to men, yeah. going back to your point, to where once it's said, God damn I, I, <laughs> Come on now, what what we we gotta we we damn near starting over from scratch. I don't even know you no more. Yeah, this is but I so many men don't speak up. You see what like, I'm saying? Like I do, I do, I've done. Excuse me, one on one calls at least two or three times a month with a man on the call. He's doing the call because his lady said something that he can't go back to how he felt before that. But he ain't telling her that. But he ain't telling he her only, that. He's he trying to get, you know, some advice on how to approach the conversation because he want to bring it up. But it's like, bro, you know your, your view changed. You should have said something in the moment that even if you didn't continue the, the conversation or try to sort it out, but something needed to be articulated to that woman yeah. in that moment in that, that moment. hey, that's crossing a line. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can't even articulate what line right now, baby, but you just <laughs> crossed the motherfucking right. you, line. You, you crossed the line. And, and let me tell you, a lot of guys, especially when they reach a certain age, they be so focused on peace yeah. that they will be willing to compromise, right, under the guise of peace, but inadvertently creating more chaos that's, but I in would, the relationship. Because that's what eventually happens that peace down you, the line. Right, that, For the temporary woo. being able to get a good night's sleep and not addressing that shit yep. that may keep you up to 2, 3 in the morning, yes. not addressing it going to cause your ass to die yes. 10 years early. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Come on. And so lose a night's, night's sleep to gain yep. a lifetime of peace. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Down yep. the line. So, But uh, oftentimes we don't want to bite that bullet. And we don't want to confront her. But I'm, I'm going to give you this, though, love. Because I, I, I really like where you're going with this. The society itself is beating us down as, as black is. men. But, but I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying in the context of why I'm bringing this up is because I'm saying stand up for yourself. Right. I didn't say flip out. I, I didn't say right. act. But I'm right. saying as a woman. You have, have to your, let me know yeah. where your boundaries are in regards yeah. to respect, what, how much you can take. And I feel like it shouldn't be a play of, like, I'm going to take as much as I can until I break. Because that's when you respond or react in a yeah. very immature way. Mm -hmm. It has to start from jump, bro. Jump. You cannot let me come out my mouth sideways, all off the way. wall, yeah. not say nothing. Yeah. Because as you do this, you talking about peace, and I'm hyping up off this. Like, yeah, I cussed that nigga out. <laughs> let, bitch, let him try me this week. Motherfucker, yeah, if he don't pay for this. Like, you, you, y'all don't realize, like, <laughs> to the point where we on podcast, like, yeah, because, bitch, my mouth. I cut, like we we are glorifying yeah, we, the idea of cussing y'all the had, fuck out. That's in love. I'm a what? <laughs> what? I'm like they don't understand that they y'all are part I of the problem, bro. I can't. I can't see. God, <laughs> come on, it's, fellas. It's, come on, fellas. We gotta. We got to huddle up. And gotta, I feel like I know y'all know this. Yeah, we we I, do. I, because, again, this be the conversation in the barbershop. I, because I, I just say was going to say that. I feel like if I was a flower we, wall, we be, wall. We be members of the same club that ain't nobody talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Whether they single yep. or whether, and definitely if they married. Yep. Like, married men yep. be in the same damn club yep. that ain't nobody signed up for yep. and ain't nobody talking about. We yep. be having the same damn story. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And it always takes that one guy yeah. to bring up something and then you start seeing everybody around the barbershop looking like Yes, yeah, because all y'all going they, through. They, ch they chomping. They have been waiting on this. You know what I'm saying? But somebody had to break the ice. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I, introduce, and then that shit, they, they didn't got their hair cut four hours ago. They yep. still, still in there. sitting there. You like, bro, bro, do he done paid and all. You know what I mean? girl called <laughs> And then where the hell are you at? We got to, I got dinner on the stove with you. I'm, I'm in here with the fellas. We have, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But that's that's how these conversations go. And and to your point, we as men, we have to have that level of confidence yes. in ourselves first and foremost to be able to have those clear boundaries. And if they're crossed, like you said, check it immediately. Yeah, and I'm again, I'm gonna yeah. stress, I'm not saying go up. I because you you can as, as a man that understands what he doesn't want to tolerate, right. you can you articulate this mm -hmm. in a whisper. Right. Hey, babe, listen. Don't ever do stuff that again. You don't ever, ever say that. Like, right. you need that, mm -hmm. not just for her to understand your boundaries, but for you to have some confidence in yourself. And yeah. I feel like that's why a lot of men are getting manipulated like a yeah. mug in relationships. It's yeah. not, what I'm talking about is not about breaking up. 
Right. It's not about leaving your home. It's about establishing yourself as a man. And women, we love that. Regardless of what these right. little mm -hmm. girls telling y'all, yeah. grown yeah. women love when a man lay down the law right. in regards to how he want to be treated, mm -hmm. how he may want things ran, right. how he wants stuff structured in your treatment yeah. of him. Yeah. And I feel like this is so important. You know, I call that establishing a healthy relationship rhythm. Yeah. Because as men, you know, we're naturally creatures of habit, yeah. right? And so there's there's a rhythm that we as men enjoy being in and really need to be in with the woman in our life, yes. right? If don't nobody else in the world understands yep. me, she got to understand yep. me. And, and, and even if she may not agree with the rhythm initially, yep. I'm going to be willing. I, I have to explain to her why this rhythm is important for me yep. so that I can continue to be healthy, yep. so that I can continue to be productive. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Relate to our children yep. in a healthy way and have a healthy dispositional outlook about yep. myself. I have to stay in this particular rhythm. Yes. And so your your responsibility to me is to aid in that. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Not take yes. away. because yes. You start fucking with that. Now we got a problem yes. because, I, because the potential is for me to no longer be myself. Yes, that's what, and I, I call it hell at home. Yeah, hell at home. You chasing peace, but you're creating a hell space at home. Yeah, and for yeah. me, exactly what you said earlier. As a black man, when you look around, you're the most killed. Yeah, you're the most killed by your own. Mm -hmm. Right. Like black men killing black yeah, men. Yeah. You're the most suppressed in regards yeah. to systemic stuff. Mm -hmm. When we look at our culture and family, yeah. you're the one getting the boot. Yeah. From structure of being involved and needed. We're out um, advocating for single mothers and, you know, fuck these niggas and we can do it by <laughs> ourselves. And it's like as a man, if you're not aware of that yeah. enough to articulate, hey, listen, certain shit I can't take from you. Right. Like you say, I, I, this is going on in the world. In the society we itself, We ain't yeah. got nothing if I'm have to take this same kind of shit What's the from point? you. I ain't looking for you to be no yes man or right. babysit me or it, none of that on, stuff. On this is just shit. a clear no. establishment. Let's have some understanding. Yes. Because I ain't, I ain't crying about it. Yep. I understand what it's about. Yep. But like you said, if the society itself has already placed me in a nigga ain't shit come on. box. Come on. I, I can't come home and be yeah. viewed or ain't shit. like, like, I'm a, like ain't I ain't shit. shit. Yep. When I know that I'm doing what it is that I'm yep. supposed to be doing. Yep. But even yes. if I fell short, I, I'm never going to get back up if right. it's coming all angles. Nah, n never. Uh, if it's, it's it, it, I yeah. got to have something, something over here, bro, where it's right. a safe haven. I always give the example, like when I'm on my lives, I explain, you ever see an action movie and that the, the hero in the movie that's fighting the villains and things mm -hmm. like that, it might be a scene where he getting fucked up. Right. He, he done caught a bullet, down and out. crossed yeah. his arm, mm -hmm. he done got cut on his leg, something. You will see where he will, you know, drag himself into some sort of room, bathroom, abandoned building and start bandaging. <laughs> right. It has to be a safe space yeah. in the battle Somewhere. where I get myself back <laughs> right. Yeah, right. it's a moment where you regroup and then you know in the movie this nigga finna come back right. strong. Yeah, come back get, strong. Right. Right. They <laughs> might, he might go off and call that doctor that right. can patch up his bullet with right. a knife and mm -hmm. whoop some ass for the rest yeah, exactly. of the movie. It has to be that. Yeah, yeah. If, if he doesn't have a respite, right, like you said, a safe space to go back to and gather himself. It's not even in human nature to be at war yeah. and on high Constantly. alert all day, every day. Con like that's that's impossible. Yep. Even in actual warfare, yep. they have to take soldiers off the front line yep. and send them to the back, to the rear, yep. so that they can have some R and R. Yep. You see, they be back there playing cards, dominoes, yep. all kinds, and, and a whole war going on because they can't. You can only be on the front line for a so certain amount of time your before your gonna, your mental come gonna break. <laughs> and they call that the fog of war. Yes. You know what I mean? Where you start. You might start shooting your own. Yep. Because you, you know, everything, own... you in fight or flight exactly. nonstop. And that, and that constant flow of adrenaline, yep. that fear, all of those things will eventually, like you said, lead to a psychic break. Yep. You know, a mental breakdown. Yep. And so, to, to, to your point, we have to have those safe spaces as men. But talk about those safe spaces as women, though, because I, I know women yep. need them, too. And I love that you said that about in constant chaos. So for us as women, when 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 you look at what you asked me about manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. We are in this space where we're so caught up in vanity and the surface level. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by surface level. It's the looks, it's the getting the body done, it's the putting on makeup, <laughs> right. the wigs, and it's having this dude baby. This is the stuff that's sitting out on the tabletop. Yeah. 
the solid stuff that holds the table up for you to be that woman that is of value to a man and value to yourself is so much more than that. So much more. So for us, when at the forefront of your mind, it's look good, mm -hmm. which is going to get the dudes giving you all the yeah, compliments, the in, the, all the attention, yeah, the attention. brush you bad, mm -hmm. all of that, you're going to get caught up in that. And then that will be your manipulation tactic to keep the relationship going. Yeah. It will be about the giving away of your body, yeah. the keeping up with your looks, yeah. and the if I start to see things go a certain direction, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh, let's take a break. We'll be right back. What's good, family? Real quick, if you or anyone you know is dealing with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetic blood sugar, the solution is here, and it's olive leaf extract. Olive leaf extract will naturally lower high blood pressure as well as high cholesterol and help balance diabetic blood sugar. For more information, go to shopmyoliveleaf.com or call 678-554-5754. So I, I know you know this, right? You you know some people and know some stories where as soon as the woman could tell the dude was on the outs, I'm pregnant. He already had that. Whether she's pregnant out. or not, yeah, we yeah, ain't nah, even. That, it's, just, it's, it's manipulation. Yep. I know this right here is gonna keep his ass yep, here. Yep. Or at least get me the pity. Right. Or that view mm -hmm. that he did something to me and I am in the right. So I didn't yeah. lose that man. I didn't lose a good man. Right. Look how he left these kids over exactly. here. Exactly. He ain't no good man. He so ain't no I ain't lose nothing. That's our number one way of validating ourselves That's it. now. Mm -hmm. And it's so fucked up. It is. To the point where we're manipulating ourselves out of actually being that boss woman, that real female, that in your femininity mm -hmm. and knowing what makes you valuable. So we were out here like, in order for me to feel like I didn't lose anything good or I'm not gotta, the gotta, catch. Gotta attack the manhood. Yes. Gotta, gotta attack his value. Yep. You know what I mean? Because you know, that's what the society has yep. done anyway. Yep. So let me finish him off. Yep. You see what I'm saying? In ways that only I can because I am I have that level of relationship with yep. him. You see? Let me, let me look to destroy him yep. so that he is of no value to anybody he else after yep. me. But also... If I paint that picture or if I give you guys the perception that he's of no value, right, you won't feel like there's anything wrong, wrong with me. With me. This is go. why so many of us as baby mamas have so much negative stuff to say about the baby daddy. Right. Because the family didn't work out in regards to us staying together. Mm -hmm. I don't need y'all thinking I couldn't keep a man. Right. So let me tell you about this man. Right. Exactly. How about he ain't do this? <laughs> and the babies don't got this. And he ain't show up <laughs> over here for this. And so when you talk about us and protecting mm. ourselves from the manipulation, you will attract all kind of fucked up ass dudes when this is your mentality. Yeah. That's why you see us repeat the cycle, cycle of another baby over. daddy, yeah. same bullshit. Another baby daddy, same bullshit. Yeah. Because we're leading with just this tabletop shit the surface of stuff. vanity, sex, and then I'm going to throw a baby on top of there. Yeah. That for, is what for I'm... my security. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I'm basing my, my foundation off of as I'm approaching relationships. And it opens the door for us to be manipulated. L let, me, let me ask you this, because you got, you got me thinking now that the, the manipulation that comes as a result of actually being born into poverty, yeah. right? And the need and the innate need for us to escape that which causes us pain. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> what, you, you listen, you said it so perfect. It, it, it is real. It is something that when you break generational curses or you confront your traumas, you have to look at. There is a certain set of things in um, psychology and, you know, social mm -hmm. work. They call them ACEs, right? Okay. So the idea is these are things that when a child is born into scenarios with two to four of these, they're going to go through a lot of mental hardships. Okay. Poverty is one of is them. One. A yeah. single parent household is another. Witnessing domestic violence is another. Mm. Drug abuse or use of excessive use of substances, Substance. rather yeah. it's alcohol or narcotics. Mm -hmm. These are things that it is a given that you're going to go through some trauma that's going to show up in a big way in your adult life and what you attract when you're born into these type of things. Poverty. Poverty. 
domestic single, single mothers, single headed household, single headed household, because you're less likely to have the resources, balance. the balance, the opportunities. Mm -hmm. There are so many statistics. You're, you're on, limited. Yes, in which you're, 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 in yes, terms you're of, reached. One hundred percent being exposed to domestic violence. Okay. Um, there's also um, in the drugs or yes, alcohol. The drugs yeah. and the alcohol, and there's a few more. But the idea is when I when I like on my platform when I talk about these, immediately I can't get past those four. Hey, shit, you, when you name those four, I could, I'm like, what else is there? When I, but, right. <laughs> in but, and and there's, the th here's the thing. So there's more, but the reason why I can't get past those four, because as soon as you say those four, everybody triggered. Right. It, everybody you, you on the live, you, you everybody in the yeah, Zoom. You, you, if you we was in a room, you didn't touch they everybody. Mad. Yeah. They admittedly, yeah. they're, what you mean? Just because yeah. we was, my mama did a good job. It don't matter just because, so you saying just because I seen domestic violence, I'm fucked up. Like, they don't make it past just accepting the fact that, bro, these are not, Good scenarios. These are not things that we should be exposed to, but a lot of us are. But love, just given if there's, you say that there's more than those four, <laughs> but shit, those four is, is touching ninety nine percent of us. Yep. Shit, some of us, all four. Yep. But do you see how you're interested in discussing it, even though you know it's touching all of us? So we all we like, all uh, affected. Right. Most people, when they hear it, and it's all of us, they don't want to talk about it because it's like everybody going through that. I don't, we don't. That ain't nothing new. That ain't that ain't nothing special. It's like we've been going yes, through that. That's yes. why I say I can't get past the fold. They right. don't want to discuss it once they realize they fall into that category, mm -hmm. and that now the conversation goes in the direction of your parents weren't that bright about how they were raising you in certain areas. In certain areas. And I'm not saying they were supposed to be perfect, but at some point you have to confront those things that you experience. Get some therapy at times, yeah. reestablish yourself so that you can decide who you are and then find your tribe. Because like you said earlier, oftentimes your tribe is not those people that you were raised around or born from. Shit, that's where the most most of your tribe comes from. Those four things yeah. came from fucking right. around that's, with Yeah, that's, that's what you rooted to oftentimes more than anything. Yep. Right? And so, Nate, with those four things. Adverse childhood I, experiences. I can, I, can all, I can see the type of woman that would be produced. Yep. By by those four things, yep. and it's exactly the type of woman that you just illustrated with. Yep. The, and I don't give up. Yep, that's what comes out yep. of at least the four. The four. Yep. Now, if there's eight of them, <laughs> shit, I can I can only imagine. Yep. But I I can just about sense because I've seen far too many of those types of women yep. when when there's pressure on the relationship or disagreement or yep. what have you. That becomes the fallback. Yes. That becomes the the, 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 the muscle memory, yep. for lack of a better it's, way to say it. Those things are familiar to our familiar. subconscious mind. Mm. There are certain beliefs that we have about men and women and relationships and family that got rooted from those experiences, those experiences. right? And so when we groan and we react and we operate a certain way, you looking at me like, damn, she's a fucked up individual, but really, I have trauma that I didn't see about, that I didn't even really know that I had. Right. I'm not thinking that I'm as bad as what you're saying because yeah. I've never actually confronted this stuff. Right. This is why you see a lot of dudes nowadays, they look up, and the female they was just locked in with has turned on them. She's turned the kids against mm -hmm. them. She has taken what could have been resolved in our community without getting them involved right. with courts and all of that right. Right. and turned it into some, some huge, whole huge thing. situation. Yeah. And it, once you do that, especially like starting with that first baby daddy or that first situation, it then plays a big role in what you attract as a woman moving forward. So a lot of women don't realize the fucked up individual dudes that you getting after that stuff with your baby daddy has to do with what's still on what's you. What's still on That's you. That's why you getting them type of dudes. The re a the narcissist has a type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A predator preys on a certain type. Type of person. So yeah. as much as I can sit here and articulate what's wrong with you after the relationship end, I have to then say, if you had all them severe things wrong with you, there's something in me that attracts that type of stuff. Mm. A narcissist is not going around, a manipulator is not going around looking for the most intellectual, well put together, <laughs> right. stable minded individual right. to try to manipulate. Nah. We don't look for the hard no, job. It's like a predator. It's, they seek the weaker or, or, or that which they can devour, yep. for lack of a better it, way to you say it. I always say to keep it simple, think about the streets. 
Yeah. I'm not trying to rob the the most security right. <laughs> situation. Go to the I'm most vulnerable. I'm trying to rob yeah. the one they drunk, they be yeah. on pills, they go <laughs> right. to the club. Right. Hey, bro, they leave they, they, yep, yeah. they leave the mm-hmm. one dude at the trap by himself. Yeah. We gonna hit him. We looking for the weak ones. Yeah, looking so for the weak ones. So you have to really look at yourself and say, listen, if he came in and did all that, I need to go check on me. Yeah. Because bringing in that type of dude and there was something that made him feel comfortable enough to feel like he can come in here and do this kind of stuff. I I always say we as men, especially, you know, coming out of relationships, we have to take the time, number one, to heal. Yep. Right. But also on a practical level, reevaluate what I refer to as our operating system. Yeah. Right. Where we now got to got to retune. Yeah. Reset. Yep. Readjust. You know what I'm saying? Some things. So that we don't fall into the same type of behavior yep. again. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Because to your point, and, and, and to me, a lot of the conversations around relationships is coming from people who are already in a dysfunctional behavior <laughs> pattern themselves. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And yep. they're just kind of freestyling their way through conversations under the guise of therapy, yep. right? Let me let me create a podcast yeah. and then that way I get to talk about yep. all of the shit that happened to me that don't nobody really know happened to me. Yep. And this is a way that I can get back at my baby mama, mama. at yep. my baby daddy, yep. the, at, at her family, yep. at his yes. family. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I'm going to weaponize my platform Come on. now because I got a voice. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Yep. When I didn't have no voice in my yep. house, yep. now I got a voice. So you motherfuckers going to deal with me now. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And what you put out? It 100% determines what you attract. What you, what you get so back. when you talk yeah. and you own all that shit, you're going to attract that type of stuff. Because yes. even for your podcast, people that are on defending or arguing for or grossly against that are the ones that's going to flock to your page, your environment, you, you, want to connect and do business with you. You know, I call that the Lord of the Flies. <laughs> right. right. Where, and you can ride out Lord on that, the flies. The, the, you can ride out on that type of of content forever yeah. because there's enough brokenness to yeah. go around yep. you know what i mean to to it becomes unending but if if your platform and and we'll get back to the manipulation but i got to touch on this cuz i know you're going to go in <laughs> when your platform is is all about going in on folks yeah and you're not actually in a position to actually teach go, yep Come on. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You got to question. What you doing? What you doing? What's your motives? What's your motives? What is your intent? You see what I'm saying? Yep. If you have a conversation today, and even if the, 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 the comments piss you off, that don't necessarily mean make that the next podcast yes. episode. Because yep. that's really what they go off of. You see what I'm saying? Because if you do, you're creating <laughs> yep. that momentum yep. to where now you're responding to yep. everything. Yep. And I'm telling you, as because for me, I know that our people just need the tools. We, we need just the tools. need the appropriate tools. So if you have a platform where you're drawing people in that are broken, you should 100% start giving out or do yourself a favor for your platform and you doing good in this world to go research and look into where could you direct these people to to get help. Even if you ain't got the skills like people like me have to give it to them directly, send them somewhere. Connect with a relationship counselor. Put their information in the uh, the bio or something and route these people to that instead of sitting up here just going on and on about this shit to where it's now it's like we're glorifying these conversations and to just beat to one question, another down right. with no solutions mm. to any of it. I ha- and I got to look at the camera on this one. <laughs> now, now y'all may be able to understand why ain't nobody else been on here but Love Dorsey. <laughs> OK, because I'm not real interested, really interested in having a bunch of different guests with a bunch of different conversations contradicting each other. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Because if somebody comes from one perspective and, and somebody else comes from the exact opposite perspective, somebody wrong. Yep. And so me as a podcast host, I have to be able to check the person who's wrong. Yep. And they will nine times out of ten get in their feelings. Yep. Because they're being checked or corrected or yep. what have you, or counter perspective, and then that becomes the conversation. Yep. So if you notice, with Relax and Take Notes, we take the time to go in deep yep. on conversation. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That way the message is not convoluted. Yep. I, 
you know, the intent, the purpose you is not misunderstood. This is not just sitting here talking shit we about ain't one gender or the next with no real um, goal to solve in the community. And it's so necessary. We, I feel like every every podcast or platform that's just doing that, you're just as much a part of the problem, regardless you're of which stance of you're taking you're part on of the, the podcast. Exactly. And I love when you said someone has to be wrong because when you look at like people that have these complete opposite perspectives, you never see the conversation go in the direction of what is the resolve? Like right. you got your perspective and I know you feel you right. right. I got mine, I know I feel I'm right. What is the resolve to keep family together? Exactly. What is the resolve to separate the two toxic adults but make sure the children are still supported? Because that has to what be is, the goal. It, this is what, and they never touch on they that never because that ain't their goal. That ain't their goal. The, the goal, goal is, is to just be right. The, it, right, and <laughs> to have the circular conversation yep. that never solves anything. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I would ask the audience to really pay attention to. The types of conversations, yes. the depth of the conversations, yes. whether or not the conversation is solutions based. And even when the host disagrees with what the guest says, do they allow the guests to just get away with saying it? Yep. Because they and got you a see big that following. So yeah, because they got a big following yep. and they don't want to fall out with the guests because they want the guests back home at some point. You yep. see what I'm saying? So it becomes a, a, a highway of confusion and chaos and people need real answers. All of these conversations yep. are a reflection of the fact that the black family has been damn near destroyed. Yes, right? come on. And so many of the things that we should have naturally gotten from mother and father, yep. aunts and uncles, grandparents are not there. Yep. And now you get a specialist like Love Dorsey that's here to address the real issues because if you if you really experience a healthy family, you would already know these things. Yep. And much of this yep. stuff you would have already avoided. Yep. You see 100%. What I'm but it's just a reflection of the breakdown in our families. But somebody gotta do this work. Yeah, I love what you said because for me, the root of my drive and where it comes from is wanting to see the condition of our families change, change. dramatically. Yeah. Not a little bit, not just, oh, you and your baby mama be cordial. No, like change the way that we think about yes. what is necessary for us to be healthy beings and a yes. healthy group of people, a healthy community, a healthy culture. And behold, every bit yeah. of what you read in the, the definition of culture needs to be addressed. Needs From to be addressed. what mm -hmm. we respect and look at as art and discuss to music, to attire, to, you know, what is appropriate for what. I remember, like, um, when you talk to, you know, older women that are well put together in their demeanor and they understand femininity. They talk about, like, back in the day, cotillion. And mm -hmm. things like that, where the right. young girls go, they get structure on how right. to, etiquette, you know, all, yes, mm -hmm. etiquette and structure on how, how to, to operate sit. at a formal yeah. dinner, mm -hmm. how to sit. With, how, the knee, with their legs crossed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But also even, even it, it puts into context what a gentleman looks like. Right. I talk to so many women and I hate it for them that they've never been shown or even verbally shown, just paint me a picture verbally of what a gentleman looks like. Yeah. What, it, what the... Value is in having a man that opens doors, pulls out chairs, you know, just handles certain things. Had nothing to things. do with you mm -hmm. paying for a whole bunch of shit or buying a Birkin <laughs> right. or any of those <laughs> nah. things. But just simply having things. care for mm -hmm. the fact that I am the feminine figure. You're, yeah, you are you're not. a lady. Mm -hmm. But because young girls aren't getting that, they don't know that that is even a thing. And then a lot of them, the first time they see it is a podcast arguing about it. Right. A man with a mic and a woman with a mic and he's saying, and uh, going back. we ain't got to open no doors, bitch. I paid all the bills. And she's saying, you can at least open it. And, and it's like, to that young, young woman or they that... They don't know young, what to it's do. It's like, well, I don't know what to think. And as that young man, he don't know what to do. Yep. He don't Is know... Is she trying to control he, me? Because right. she... I paid for the dinner, and now she's talking about I ain't pull out... The, it's, it's so all over the place. But he should have gotten that as a young boy from yep. his father. Yep. From his big brother, from his uncle. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Somebody in the house should have been grooming him on how to properly treat a woman yep. so that these things... Or just was done. Yeah, and, and we're he not ain't looked that. at, and he ain't even looked at as a simp for opening. Because some of Come these on. simp conversations, I'd Come be on. like, that's simping. But even we are buying into it. Right. That's when you ask me about women being manipulated. A lot of the shit that's going on in our culture has us believing he a simp, and he's doing gentleman things. He's doing what he's a doing man has things historically that if you done. had a yeah. real father involved in your upbringing as a young woman, you would know that that's actually a catch. 
You see? Even though he rich and he's riding around in the hell. He, yeah. Yes. He's displaying value. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this aspect of trauma bonding, mm -hmm. right? Because we we know or maybe maybe the audience doesn't know. I'm not going to assume. What what is trauma bonding? So when you ask me, right, in the context of, you know, what I talk about on my platform, this is when individuals get together and with the intent to relate to one another or mm -hmm. build a bond, a friendship, a in the moment a relationship mm -hmm. where we feel more alike. They trade trauma stories. They trade victim stories. They trade um, historical events or even current events that deal with negativity, trauma, drama, hurt, um, mm -hmm. stuff that has occurred that they don't have a solution for or they were wronged. Right. Some sort of injustice. Mm -hmm. And so it is so easy to make friends this way. It is so easy to find yourself in a bed with somebody mm -hmm. this way. We meet and I don't care if it's sitting at the bar talking or a restaurant or just out and about. It could be that, oh, you just got in a car accident. Yeah, I got in one last week. And, you know, the <laughs> insurance company ain't paid me yet. Right. And you like, well, yeah, they, I, they paid me, but they ain't give me that much. And then we just get deep into how we got fucked over by yeah. the insurance company from the car accident. And the person that hit you ain't had no insurance. And the lady that hit me had insurance, but it wasn't that much. And so now we've developed like a day. Oh, give me a number. A bond. I, a, a bond. A, we we actually like each other off of trauma. trauma. And oftentimes what is going on in our community is... This is how a lot of friendships and relationships were started. Mm. You don't know nothing about this person's character, <laughs> right. their intent in regards to how they maneuver with life. Values but and none of it that. It feels yeah. so good to fuck with you because we got it's, the same it's, injustices. It's familiar. Right. Yeah. So now later on, I'm going through all kind of shit and your real self is shown, right? And now I feel mm. betrayed and I got this whole you can't trust niggas of loyalty. And it's because never did I actually bond with you on some real principles. Mm. It was all off the relation of, you know, familiarity to a particular trauma or event. You know, in this, let me, t tell me if this is a reach. Gangs. Could that be a form of trauma bonding? Because I look at some of the, the yes. some of the ingredients. Well, I ain't have my daddy that, that, neither, shit. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm from, I grew up I'm as from a, 18th, in, where you from? Right. Hell yeah, bro, shit. I'm, I, ain't, I, ain't I ain't no whole neither. Either. I yeah. ain't have shit. We, so now we're, we're bonded. We bros because we started from the bottom right. and we are both And from, now we here on the block. Yep. Yep. Mm. It's a trauma bond. And, then and that's the a same, form of manipulation. The same yeah. as what I'm saying that goes on in just regular civilian relationships. You see them two dudes catch a case together. You think this your brother. Why? Because both of y'all was poor growing up. Right. His mama was on crack and yours was too. And he caught a charge at 17 and you went to prison and did, you know, 18 months before like he did. Yeah. This, this your brother. Y'all got similar stories. Y'all came the up together. The, right. you, the trauma told y'all that we locked in. Bro. We locked in. They lock y'all up and he faced with 25. Now he's telling on you and you giving yourself this false perception that you were yeah, done you wrong. Gonna keep, you gonna you be solid. Know, you yeah, don't know, bro, yeah. like that. But now you telling yourself, damn, bro, bro, disloyal. Man, yeah. that nigga told on me, dog. Bro, you don't know this, man, besides <laughs> the fact that y'all both right. came from some bullshit. Right. Some we're not homes. seeking to yeah. build relationships we don't go off deep of, enough. Yes. Yeah. Nothing substantive, nothing that, that to your point, evaluates a person's character. Yep. It's just, we, we think just because I'm on the block and, and he on the block, yep. that's enough. Yep. Women, we become friends off of, girl, fuck my baby daddy, bitch, fuck my baby daddy too. Girl, I can't stand that nigga. Yeah, because my baby needed this. For, and, and it turns into a whole, we not, on the not, phone. Not as your sister. For, and it's my yeah. sis. Sis, what's up, sis? Now when sis fuck your man, or sis steal out your purse, <laughs> right. or sis talk about you behind your back in another trauma bonded you, relationship, you, 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 you are you gravely betrayed. hurt. You, you're betrayed. That girl yeah. wasn't your motherfucking sister. The whole time. Y'all both just had babies from what y'all perceived to be bum ass niggas. Yeah. And y'all connected on that basis. On, on that the trauma. Basis. Yeah. A, a good majority of the relationships, friendships that you see now in our culture came off of that. Mm. This is why I'm always pushing my people to get out of the victim mentality. Yeah. Because when your mom, male or female, is on your traumas, you being a victim, the stuff that was done to you that were injustices, you go around and this is your front running conversation. Mm. You don't sit down at dinner and talk about politics or, you know, the, the next local event and thing. You talk about your trauma, which prompts the other people to share theirs, and y'all trauma bond. Yeah. And when we trade war stories, it does make you feel like we are connected. Yeah, it's a comrade. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why, because so it's so familiar. Come on. And yeah. from there, it, it gives you that 
false sense of loyalty, and, and we let ourselves down while saying that someone else did it to us. Right. Then when you look around, you got people that are, you know, in the falling out of these fake trauma-bonded relationships, and they all now have trust issues. Mm. So then when they do come across a healthy individual, they don't even you recognize already it. <laughs> suspecting the man cheating or the girl lying or this going on or I ain't a good friend because all your other friendships was based on some bullshit. Right. So because I won't tell you my business, and I've been through it, where because I don't have any war stories to share with you about my relationships or right. my personal problems, I'm uppity or I'm acting funny. Yeah, you, you, you think you're better than everybody. Yes, but that's not how you build a friendship. Nah, and that ain't even how you live life. <laughs> We know we've had some negative experiences, but we ain't got to wear that shit like a badge of honor. Right, and you don't lead with it when meeting people. Right, absolutely Otherwise, not. what you attract is going to match what you're putting out there. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that I can't stand in, in, my, in my personal interactions with people is that passive-aggressive shit. Yeah. That is the most... If you want to <laughs> make me upset, do that, that, that passive-aggressive is the worst. Describe, <laughs> describe that right there, because I know for a lot of people that tell, it make you want to. That make you, you want to. Tell me what are the situations you experienced where a person is kind of saying something like they dissing you, yeah. but being try, trying to be cool about yeah. it, but they throwing a jab, yeah. but not really taking accountability that yeah. they actually throwing a yeah. jab. You know what I mean? They'll call it like frenemies and yeah. shit like that, where a person you yeah. know. Y'all might be in the same space. Y'all got some mutual acquaintances or friends, but you know the person don't really fuck with you like yep. that. You see what I'm saying? But yep. they'll come around you acting like everything yep. is all good. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And even give you compliments only to go back yep. and say some bullshit. Yep. You see what I'm saying? But never confront you on what it is that they really want to yep. say. It's rooted in self-esteem issues from what their inner child did not get. Mm. That's where that type of behavior comes from. When you meet an individual that, like you said, it's the nice, nasty, the passion passive aggressive yeah. I come off like I'm down with y'all but you know there's another side that sometimes it comes out blatantly but sometimes you find out after you left after, the room right. things that I've said it's rooted in certain things with my inner child that I did not receive yeah. uh, feelings of abandonment not fitting in issues with me having that sense of value within myself there are certain things that affect a person's um, self esteem mm -hmm. such as how I am or aren't on pace with my same sex parent. So for mm. example, when boys don't know their father and they have no idea whether I'm doing good or bad based on how my no old man doing, mm -hmm. it yep, it plays a role in their self-esteem. And it's the same for women. Mm. When and this is why when you have women that have a unhealthy relationship with their mother, it affects them. Even if they're successful with business or money, it affects their mental health and yeah. their self-esteem in their inner. Then there's the how do I pace with my peers? This mm. affects your self-esteem. A lot of people, when we start having conversations, if you're accomplished, I want to know how old you are. Right. It's a, exactly. it, it's a it, normal it, question. It's a no and it yeah. comes mm -hmm. from the fact that if you're older than me, it lets my inner child know I have time to catch up and accomplish exactly. that. But, don't, but if but you don't my be age or young, because oh, you're exposing I'm just going to start picking up. Come you're on. You're exposing my inadequacy. Yes. If I don't have a sound sense of self-worth, yeah. I will be passive aggressive or start to be that secret hater or yeah. develop some sort of jealousy because it's like I got to pick out stuff that's wrong with you or you things that level. you had it better than me right. to justify why right. you 28 and I'm 30 and you got more than me. Right. Yeah. yeah I got to tear you down. To build and myself up. I got to create a narrative about yes. you. Yes. So and that it, I can feel and it don't matter okay if it's true. about myself. I love yeah. that you understood yeah. that. Yeah. I create the narrative. Don't matter if the shit true about you, but I'm going to tell it to myself and as many people will listen because it makes me feel yeah. better about me. And a lot of times when people doing that past progressive shit, if you take it personal, you don't realize, bro, they narrative they created really got nothing to do with you. It ain't got Has nothing to do with you. To do it's, with them. It's, it's, it's a I mirror of themselves. I can't say that bro doing well and just be proud of him because when I say that, it makes me feel bad. Right. My inner child because starts to feel away. Because I know that I'm not where I want to be. You know, but instead of me getting off my ass yep. and handling business consistently, yep. I'm gonna just point the finger at it and say she ain't all that. Look, she, she, she did. So she had that. She had that, or did this. Yep. She had all of these opportunities that I didn't have. He had all of these opportunities yes. that I didn't have. Yes, you, you had both of your parents. Uh, right. Your mama bought you this, uh, bro. You got a mama to go back home to. That's why you go hard, cause you know if you take risks and mess up, you got somewhere to go and bounce back. I ain't got that. My mama, I can't yeah. go. It, it turns into this like measuring of the traumas. 
us or yeah. the what I don't have, the inadequacies. Yeah. And and when you when you're not willing, I say this so much to our people, when you are unwilling to look at your childhood, look at the things that are going on with your psyche and confront what you need to change your mm. thinking on about how those people raised you, when you're unwilling to do that, you will develop into a hater, yeah. a jealous person. Uh, sometimes you'll just be introverted where you don't trust and you don't see value in connecting with anybody. You yeah. won't build or find a tribe, or you will make or insert yourself in a tribe where you don't even trust the people that you're around. You, you ever seen you people don't. that, they, they tell you, bro, I don't really fuck with homie and trust him. But when you look up, he always over there with homie. Always around each other, all, all all the time you you know I, I see it I see it all the time and it, it makes you question like you said the motivations of people yep. like w why are you even wasting your time with a person that you don't yep. truly feel connected to yep you see what I'm saying why are you wasting your life you know not, what I'm saying? not think about what you said and what you asked me earlier in regards to relationships right so when we talk about manipulation if I'm in one of those relationships I can articulate to you very well mm -hmm. when I come up to the barbershop I don't trust this nigga like I don't, he be doing this, his family don't like me. I got all these solid ideas. And right. if you, you know, debate with me, I'm gonna give you examples. Yeah. And I'm gonna really break down to you in grave detail how this nigga really ain't to be trusted. But I won't leave. But it won't leave. Now, in order for me to stay in this relationship, I have to manipulate. Got to. I have to do shit to make myself feel better about existing in this environment. It's a given that I'm manipulating and receiving some forms of manipulation from him. Love. It's a must. That's the only way you can survive, survive in those in kind it. of conditions. Because it's a survival, it's a, what I call the survival thrust. Yes. It's a, it's a must that I've figured out how to navigate yes. in this environment. Yes. That's the only way that you're able to go go to work, come home, and be in a space, a personal space, with that type of person. You own some bullshit, too. Yeah. And everything yeah. that I might have told you about this man is true. He probably is not trustworthy in the, the scenarios I gave you. I'm accurately describing them, but there's a lot wrong with me because of the fact that I am staying in that when I can articulate that the shit ain't good. You know, love, I remember this, that, well, there's a rapper who says how to survive in a room full of vultures, yep. right? And now what I'm understanding yep. is how you survive in a room full of vultures is you become a vulture. Come on. Come on. That's the only way Come you on. can it's, survive it's, in a I room hope, full of vultures. I hope when they watch this that they're catching the double-edged sword right now, like the, the depth to what you're saying. Because, you know, for me, I've said it all kind of ways. As you go on this rant describing what is gravely wrong with people that you fucking with, the fact that you fucking with them, you're a lot like it them reflects, more than you actually think. Right. Because you don't spend You're any time benign. looking at yourself, yeah. it's a lot of shit you probably genuinely don't notice. But, bro, you ain't too different. You ain't too far removed from that. Come on. Everybody like to tell the story that I'm just a good person. Good people that know they're good people, they don't just sit around and tolerate that. Nah. They do not. They, and, they, and they don't operate successfully in those environments. Come on. You need to say that again. They don't operate <laughs> successfully in environments with vultures. Yep. Unless and until they become a vulture themselves. Yes. And this is, in this moment, I want to give some truth or validity to when you hear women say, like, it's a struggle to stay in my femininity when I'm with a man that is not leading or playing that masculine role, mm -hmm. right? There is some validity to a small extent in reference to what we're saying because if I sit up with a man that is treating me bad, beating me down, lying to me, cheating on me, mm -hmm. using me, and I'm every bit of allowing it, I will not be in the best space as a woman. You yeah. won't see my uh, natural femininity oozing out because I, I don't feel protected. Right. doesn't matter if you paying the bills and showing up here every day. It's so much trauma and bullshit and things that's twisting my mind. Plus, I'm emotional by right. nature. The femininity will show up as toxic. Yeah. It'll be there, but it'll be in the form of the crying and the fussing and the, you know, it's passive aggressive at yeah, times all because of those things all yeah. around the board and then anybody outside of our relationship that seems like they're on his side more than mine or can't understand what i'm going through right they're an enemy to me too they're an enemy now to i'm me nasty too. to people and this ain't even who i want to be as a woman but y'all don't get what the fuck i'm going through because this nigga taking me through this and i've been through right. that and I, he had a baby on me and all and it's changing <laughs> right it, it didn't change me yes yeah yeah it then took me completely out of who I was supposed to be for me. Yes, come on. Into this other thing. Love, you know, we, 
Wow. It, you know, and I this, can't be this a is like the third conversation that, that we've had where I just been like, God damn. Yep. But even to what you said earlier, because the shit deep, I can't be no helpmate. Right. In, a, when in, I, in an environment a, like that. And, and yeah. I don't know if men fully understand this, but when a woman wakes up and the day seems heavy, like emotionally, I can't sort through these thoughts. And I ain't even saying it's that particular man's right. fault yeah. that she with. I'm just saying when you take a woman that she's, she's overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. overwhelmed mentally and we already emotional by nature, our intuition turns into crazy. <laughs> and we start intuitively See, now you gotta say that again. our natural intuition. When you overload yourself with stress and your emotions are off, you're not intuitive. You're crazy. Mm, you mm, go mm. into your intuition and it mixes with your imagination. The line is blurred and you're pointing out stuff, but you're also attracting bullshit. You have also become the very things that you're pointing out. We're not yeah. healthy. We cannot be of any value to you as a man. Yeah. So if you're with a woman that's in that space and you care about her, you got to put a pause on trying to move forward with the relationship and see about that woman. Yeah. Yeah. Push her to see by herself. Yeah. And if you fuck around and get her pregnant in the midst of that, those babies are going to go through so much. And we, so me and you talked hell. about yeah. this before. Mm -hmm. When the child's in the womb and we that all over the yeah. place, mm -hmm. their environment that they're growing it's in already is disturbed. Up. Yeah, it's disturbed. Yeah, we don't realize that. And some women try to explain this to men or to their baby daddy, but it, they're already in the upset. So yeah, it's, it's not it's, coming it's, out. Nah, it's not how coming I'm out right. It. Nah, we have to start taking a care. Same as I tell women to give a damn when you see your man mentally going through it. Men got to step back and really like, okay, this woman is in a space. Let me stop fucking her. Let me take a <laughs> step back because I'm you. You mix the good dick on top of that. We already crazy. You, I'm describing what the crazy is. Then you you constantly dropping dick. Then you might be dropping dick in other girls. <laughs> then we we slap. This is when you see. Yeah. I'm sure you've yeah. seen it, and I'm not. Now nah, women have gone we crazy, went, killing their children, come, like all kind on. of driving I'm, off the road, per purposely. You know, like yes, suicide. I'm saying this in yeah. so in yeah, all. Yeah, nah, we laughing, serious, but it's but a real it, thing. Yes, I'm it, watching my sisters. And like, when they crash out, we be like, damn, how did that happen? Yep. But and you can see it. It's, 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 it's been there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. Been, yeah, a I'm going to tell you, the, there's a, yeah. a, a clear difference. When y'all going through stuff, and I, this is what I was talking about earlier, it can be hidden. Yeah. Like mm. men, it, because of, you know, historically where we come from mm -hmm. on how y'all are supposed to be, you could be in mental turmoil. And don't and nobody never know it. Right. Unless you be, be acting out. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For us, it's going to show up. Yeah. The wig going to be crooked. We're going to be talking <laughs> crazy. You know, even if our body's done and shit, a, 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 a few something days gonna in, you're going to peep <laughs> yeah, it. And I know y'all be peeping. And some <laughs> of y'all dudes, I'm going to look in the camera when I say this. Y'all be seeing this and you still smash, bro. You still <laughs> move forward and you smash her. Some of y'all, you get them pregnant, and then now you in the situation you in now. Right, yeah. And I'm pretty mis sure you've heard some stories misery. in yeah. the barbershop. Misery. The girl yeah. was going through it. When you met her. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you might have not even did it, but the yeah. fact that we don't have a care for this. Like, yeah. come on now. Yeah. You got, I, for me, I did a whole live one. I was like, y'all got to spare them. Spare them. Like, I'm trying yeah. to get through to them. I'm trying to talk to them and say, sis, go see about yourself. Come on right. now, let's look at these traumas. Let's look at more than just the vanity. Let's mm -hmm. put a pause on sex and having babies. Let's get a grip on what you want to be as a woman. But y'all niggas coming in. Y'all smashing the left and right. They yeah, done okay. took a Zoom or two. Next thing you know, they love. I met this dude, and he, I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> All over the place. We, we back where we started. <laughs> Y'all, now y'all get why we have these in-depth conversations. We appreciate the support, and we're going to keep it going. Relax and take notes. DJ Jordan. And love, love Dorsey. Dorsey.